Mm-hmm. Karen and I recently did a video about arconic parasites, and there was so much interference with that video. As like we were someone trying- was trying to keep y'all from doing it. Yes, including my dog. Every time we started talking about it, he would just start barking. And he doesn't do that. That's not normal. And so that's what he was doing again. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, that must be Coco's mind parasite. But, you know, here's the other thing about these things is they can travel through frequencies. So it's also <laughs> an energetic thing, too. Yes. As well. It's not just a physical thing. It's energetic as well or metaphysical. I mean, I have a, a long, really complicated story about parasites, but basically, yes, they can travel through frequencies and make you or your pets sick. And you might not have any idea why you're sick. Mm-hmm. You know, this happened to me in the summer with my dog and I asked Karen to scan him. She picked up on interdimensional parasites. And I was like, okay, we cleared them. He he seemed okay, but then he got really sick again. And he ended up two days after that, like throwing up actual worms. Oh, wow. Wow. And I took the worms to the vet, the emergency vet. And she said, I've never seen worms like this before. Really? Hello, everybody. For today, we have Tina and Karen today as guests. So this will be my second interview where I'm talking to two individuals, and this is going to be episode five. So this is the first time you're seeing this this type of video. So this will be episode five out of the series. And I recommend for watching the other videos to go to my YouTube channel and look at the playlist and find the one that says New Earth versus the New World Order. And it will be episode one, two, and three, and so on. And that's the best way to enjoy all these videos. But this is episode five out of hopefully 12. Hopefully I get 12 out of it. But so far, so good. And and if you listen to this on the podcast, this would just be New Earth versus the NWO episode five at the end of it, just to make it easy. There's no playlist for the podcast, but... I'm very excited and I'm just going to go into briefly how I met Tina and Karen. I was just on YouTube and I was just doing a little bit of research and I was typing in different keywords uh, that dealt with New Earth, New World Order, different little things like that, BQH. And Tina's video came up and I don't remember the exact one that came up, but I was just, I think you did a video with Candace, if I ain't mistaken. So... So it's Mm kind of old. It was an older video. So you was doing a video with Candace. You was doing a video collaboration with her. And watching that video and listening to it, I was like, this would be very perfect for you to come on for this series and give your information as well. And here's the other interesting thing. And just like Suzanne said, there's no coincidences, right? So I posted Suzanne's video on Saturday. And then Tina posted a video on Sunday talking about the ships coming down and saving everybody and tina's information was so similar i wanted to surprise her but she, she i already <laughs> let the cat out the bag and she already went to go look at it and she already saw it she's like wow what are the odds and it's not like you knew about it at that time because i was still editing that video for a couple of weeks and i already had that video and by the time you posted yours it was very very coincidental so and on top of that, I watched one of your other videos that I would like for you to give more information about. I think you call it the black goo. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was interesting. And I think that's a lot of key information as well that can help the viewers looking for this type of information. And also keep in mind, I feel like this information is not only really for the present, but more for like a year from now or two years from now when people start waking up even more and they're like, how do I make sense of everything? How do I, you know, how do I compile all this and like what the hell is going on kind of thing. So I'm very excited for Tina and Karen to join us. And 
I'm gonna let Tina and Karen yeah, explain to everybody what y'all do and which I will interest in sharing. Okay, great. So I'm Tina and I'm a beyond quantum healing practitioner, a spirit releasement therapist, a remote spirit release practitioner, and just a, a general and intuitive empath. And together, Karen and I work together doing a lot of um, spirit, a lot of our work recently has been based up around spirit release. Um, but we also do, you know, beyond quantum healing sessions together in tandem. So it would be like, you know, the three of us together in exploring consciousness and things like that. So how so, about you, Car? Oh, Go ahead. Um, I did have a question. I always wanted to know about this because I do watch, watch some of your other videos where you talk about sessions. So is it the three of y'all working with a client? Yeah, so it would be the two of us. So I, you know, hold the space as the practitioner and Karen goes into hypnosis with them. So they work in tandem together. And the way it works is really interesting. So, you know, in in general, in, in quantum healing sessions, it's just the practitioner and the client and the client goes in to explore their consciousness, connect with the higher self, uh, do a body scan, heal, that's the general setup, right? Um, but there are people who are a little bit hesitant, people that have some extra anxiety and fear around having a session like that. And so we thought it would be supportive for those kind of people to have someone there, kind of like a, a hypnosis helper. And because Karen goes in so easily, I mean, she barely needs an induction at all. She's so connected. <laughs> yeah, just right in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she kind of acts like a support person for them. Okay. G generally, what we do is allow the, the client to take the lead. It is their session. And she acts like kind of like a backup to add extra information mm. or or to jump in when they feel stuck. Like like if Karen feels like, or senses something or like maybe even help remove blocks or yeah. someone's having a hard time going under or something. Right. right. Ah, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, and it works really well um, because it allows the, the client to really relax into it and kind of takes the pressure off them to perform, you know, because a lot of people experience performance anxiety in a session like that, especially really left brain yeah. people. Especially if it's um, the first time, they're like, what are we? What if I say something crazy? <laughs> yeah, 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 and they generally just don't know what to expect, you know. So, having that support person um, is really we found it, it to be really helpful. One of the first tandem sessions we did was our most like powerful ever. There was light language that came through, like these huge mm. activations. It was like a, a divine feminine activation with serious energy that was streaming through. And it was just so beautiful how it all worked out because it was like Karen and the other person were so in sync with what they were experiencing. Um, and they were actually like traveling to the same exact places at the same time really yeah so karen do you usually see what they're seeing um it depends sometimes it it can go a certain way and then we'll somehow meet in the same place or it'll just show me in a different way or uh, maybe a different kind of like message but it's always essentially like the same kind of like place will always land in the same, almost similar. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, like, I've, we found that, like, we've done quite a few tandems, and usually, like, if the client can take lead the way, I'll usually go in and do the healing work on their body. Oh, so, I That's mean, there's other methods, so I'm not just sitting there and, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, like yeah, we're actually doing, like, some healing work there, too. That's good. Is there a name to your uh, tandem process? Do y'all call it a certain name? No, we haven't come up with a unique name for it yet. I mean, 
as of now, we're just calling it tandem sessions, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking y'all can call it like the BQH duet or something. You know? <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> I know when uh, it's Shoe Guru, they uh, they said in the bubble. I was like, yeah, yeah, I need to call it the double bubble, you know? Cause double <laughs> bubble, yeah. <laughs> to the bubble. So I was like, call it the double bubble. <laughs> so That's a good idea. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Tina, for joining us. Karen, is there anything you would like to share on your side? Um. Well, I mean... <laughs> I've I've kind of just tried I, I mean I was Tina's like hypnosis buddy so it was like when she was going into BQH I was just like all right let's just see what we get you know just to practice and see because like you know she had a bit of anxiety in terms of like putting herself out there and so I was just like okay let me just let's practice and then it ended up being quite successful so um and then she wanted to get more sessions so I took the course also I ended up taking BQH getting um certified and then we kind of like did quite a few sessions here and there you know we also did bubble sessions we also did surrogates for kids we did tandems too like you know gaining more experience and all of that and then I started to tap into my medium abilities channeling healing and whatnot so we were able to like kind of corroborate all of it together and create a practice and then that led to something much more deeper so that's how we got into remote spirit release which actually works perfect for us because she acts as facilitator and you need a medium to go in to do the demon slaying <laughs> you got like a sword <laughs> yeah we, we got a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot of tools awesome and for your YouTube channel, and I have a link in the description below for their YouTube channel as well. Please check it out. It's very interesting stuff that y'all post. But I noticed y'all don't usually post the client session. Y'all usually post like the information that y'all gather from the session, correct? Uh, we have both. Both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So check them out. And it, it's pretty cool of all the information that comes through. And then I know some people like the ones where someone's reading it from a list of like, hey, he, he, this is what's happened instead of sitting through a whole session. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I know when I posted a session, I got two comments. So like, can you do it like this person that reads it out from a list? Yeah, I was like, there's pros and cons with that, but yeah. I understand what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people like to listen to the full sessions and some people just want the cliff notes, right? So we kind of try to uh, post a mix of everything. It is actually easier, easier for us just to talk about what we've seen. And some of them can be kind of boring. So, yeah. you know, we, we kind of just take the important or interesting things from them and just talk about them. We find that can be more interesting than really listening, especially like the RSR sessions can be quite boring at times. Um, but when we do have really interesting information that comes through, we'll actually post the session itself. Uh, next, how, how did y'all two meet? Y'all been friends well, for a long time or? Yeah, uh, well, about, what's it, almost seven, seven years? years? Seven years, yeah. yeah. We actually met on Facebook. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Facebook bringing people together. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> See, yeah. there's some good from Facebook. It's not all bad. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You know, everything is a tool and it can be used for good or for bad. I mean, it does create a lot of really um, good connections between people. So when it's used in that way, it's being used in a positive way, right? And a lot of people keep in contact with their families there and stuff like that. But then there is a dark side. So it's kind of like, it's like everything on earth. There's a light side and a dark side. It's just there's a negative and a positive. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Well, let's get this show on the road. I'm not going to go into the definitions of what the new world order is because we're run a little bit behind but let's just dive deep into this so let's begin with the black goo so the, you had a video that talked about this and it was very very interesting and i think it can go hand in hand of what's going on with the world today diving right into the deep end <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> take a minute <laughs> okay <laughs> 
All right, so from our sessions and from our research, I had always suspected um, that there was black goo in the thing. <laughs> um, oh, okay. But that was, yeah, that was confirmed in a BQH session that we had recently. Um, so what is it? What is black goo? So on every planet, every planet has its own natural organic black goo inside of it. It's what creates the ley lines around the earth. Mm. So black goo actually creates the ley lines. They are magnetic. So it's a magnetized um, gooey substance that creates the lines around the earth. That is an organic earth energy, right? And so from that, they say it's, so the black goo can project holograms. So it's said that we are projected and everything on earth is projected from the black goo. Um, however, on earth, we've been invaded by an alien black goo and uh, not okay. and not a good alien. <laughs> um, basically it's, uh, so this, so in the time of Atlantis, this port, they were, you know, they were very technologically savvy, right? They had all the technology, but they were beginning Big fan of Atlantis. Everybody knows. <laughs> you got my full attention now. <laughs> yeah. But they were beginning to do things that weren't aligned with the light, like what is happening now on Earth with the technologies like CERN and HARP. I don't know how much I can say here, um, mm -hmm. but those kinds of things. And, you know, a lot of what they're doing there is trying to open these portals to allow these dark entities through and onto the earth plane. Now, in Atlantis, they did that with a technology like CERN. They opened up this portal and through this portal came these meteorites that were carrying this alien black goo into the earth. Mm. And this alien black goo came from a planet that was basically uh, very negative in nature. And it was being kind of run by what some would call like the Demiurge. So the Demiurge goes planet to planet, kind of destroying everything in its wake. And this alien black goo came through this portal that was opened up in Atlantis, landed on Earth and in different places around the the globe or whatever you believe about it, <laughs> wherever we are, because, you know, many people say it's flat or whatever. So it's just, it's, it's deposited in different places around. Um, and with that introduction of this alien substance, um, so just like we're projected from the organic earth energy, the organic earth black goo, there are beings that are projected from the alien black goo. And these are not beings. These are beings that some would call archons. Um, they're not 100% organic. They are synthetic and holographic in nature. So that with the introduction of this, this energy onto the earth plane, this brought humanity down from a, a heart-centered, higher, higher chakra living humanity into lower chakra survival. So it has everybody kind of, and not only that, but it's, in, it's like lower chakra survival and logic. So it just skips out the whole heart. Now, this Black goose, you know, it's still existing on the planet, right? And some people have had contact with it, like in the physical contact with it and have noted that it basically just, just the contact with it, just being in its presence induced in them a kind of anger 
and rage that they've never experienced before um, to the point that they actually felt like they wanted to kill someone. Like it was really, really bad. Um, and so this is what um, we suspect is being put in the shots um, to even lower humanity's consciousness already lower than it already is, right? To mm -hmm. kind of bring us down further into a descension. Because the way I see it is, so we're coming down this hill right now, right? It's kind of like a dark age that we've been in. And we're like kind of at the bottom here, resting in the middle, like kind of at this choice point. And, the, and, you know, the dark ones know this, that we have this opportunity now to rise again into an ascension. So they're going to do everything it takes to stop that from happening. And one of the ways they are going about it is through the use of this substance in the shots to put a cap on the consciousness of humanity. But not only that, so what we saw in our recent BQH session, and we did not expect this to come through at all. Did, did all this information come from a, a session, a BQH session, or? It's, it started with this session. So I, it started with this session, and then I asked my higher self to show me more, to help me put the, the pieces together, and then I was shown all this information. So if you want to know more, like, in depth about Black Goo, look up the researcher named uh, Harold Kautz Vela. He's a scientist, um, very high consciousness though, like he's, I would say he's probably fifth dimensional consciousness in the way that he thinks and incorporates mm -hmm. the physical, the spiritual, the science, all of it brings it all together to explain what's really going on. Um, so with that said, what we saw in this session, we had a client who, her session was based a lot on like a secret space program, kind of experimental abductions, you know, all of those kinds of things. And at the end of that exploration, she found herself in this dark cave in a body of water. So it was almost like a, a symbol of being on the threshold. Like that's what that kind of was symbolizing. And not only that, but she was embodying this being called Skahawk who is in Scottish mythology, like a, a warrior goddess type figure. And this being Skaha was speaking through her and she was speaking of this anti-life particle. And she was explaining how this anti-life particle has infiltrated all aspects of our human existence here right now at this time. And it's been getting stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where we're at now where we're being injected with it, right? It's in the food, the, the land, the water, everything. To keep our vibrations down, to keep us at a lower consciousness, is that what it's for? Yes, yes, exactly. It's a very low frequency, very, very low frequency, and it will keep the consciousness down so keep the vibration down and not allowing for that expansion and growth that we naturally and organically should be experiencing now we are still like a lot of us are and it's really amazing with the amount of infringement that is happening on this earth that people are still waking up anyway and that's just an, a testament to how resilient humans are right like Humans are just amazing. And we have the capability to overcome all of these things if we would just um, come together in unity, right? And stop fighting each other because there's only like one true enemy, right? And that those are the controllers that are trying to suppress us because they see us like, just like cattle, right? Um, so that's a little bit about 
that and what's going on now. And she was explaining that you can reverse it. Each individual can reverse it. And the way she explained to do it is to, you know, go into meditation, connect with source, the organic source, love light, connect with source and ask to be shown the, um, the point of conception. So when you were conceived mm. at the point of conception, ask to be shown that and ask for that particle because it is um, inserted at that point. So ask for that anti-life particle, which is the black goo. So the anti-life particle at the point of conception, ask for that to be integrated because there needs to be an integration. We're not going to get rid of this thing. It's not gonna go away. We need to integrate it. And when we integrate it, that allows for a full healing of the anti-life particle and reestablishes the organic divine blueprint in the human. So, and she said, it's not going to take every single person on the earth to do that. It could take a small amount of people to do that, and then that will cause a ripple effect out into the consciousness of humanity. So that's what came through in this session. And then, you know, asking my higher self to show me more is when I came across Harold Kautz, Kautz Vela, the stuff about the black goo, and then beginning to put the pieces together. What she also said in that session, which was really interesting, she said the, the seers and, you know, the light workers will figure this out before the scientists do. <laughs> and she said, but when the scientists figure this out, like their minds will be blown and their worlds will be rocked. But mm -hmm. the light, the light workers will be there to show them like how we could heal this. So. The scientists, you're able to find them on YouTube, or is it just on a yeah. website? Okay. Yeah, I'll send you a link, and you can post that in the. Okay, I'll put yeah. that in the description as well. Well, I'm glad we dive right into it. <laughs> the black goo. I thought that might have been like, like gooey, like oil blackish but if it's used for the ley lines why it is, is it, why is it black if you don't mind me asking i, I would thought like it would be energy and so on so is it oil as well i believe that i don't know the the answer to that but i believe that oil does come from that and we are lied to when we're told that oil comes from fossil fuels um, and that it's non-renewable oil the earth is always recreating oil it's um, i know they'll say there's no more no more oil in this uh well 20 years from now they'll drill it again and like oh we must have left some exactly mm -hmm. because it's it's constantly renewing itself interesting yeah. and just to add more information i'm a big fan of atlantis so i remember dolores cana was talking about atlantis how they were experimenting in her book in her video they called it uh dark matter and i think we call it antimatter, and they were using that to open up portals and so on so just to go along with what you were saying and just to the story the bottom line of the story is like the warnings that was coming from it was like hey hey you guys y'all doing the same things y'all were doing in the times of atlantis and y'all doing it again y'all playing around with stuff that you have no clue what can cause mentioned talking about CERN and so on mm -hmm. and y'all doing it again you know messing around with animal DNA human DNA y'all y'all repeating the same thing and we're trying to warn y'all that hey y'all doing the same thing over again so I thought that was interesting another thing I wanted to mention too is the alien black goo is what is projecting the the entities right so like the dark force entities they're holographic and they're projected from this alien black ghost so what we know as the archons this is where they're coming from and being projected into our reality from this alien life force and i do have a question about the archons because i'm a little familiar with it. i don't know much about it 
before we go into that one, do you happen to know why Atlantis was trying to open up portals and in other dimensions and everything? Why they were trying to do that by any chance? I just feel like humans get very much in their ego at times and let's see what we can do. <laughs> see, let's see what we can do. Yeah, exactly. And you know, that can lead to a lot of destruction. So. Okay, right. Because the reason why I asked is when I talked to Sarah and one of those videos, it was kind of mentioned that they were trying to communicate to with another planet to get information that they lost. And you know, they used to be able to open up portals and be successful with it. But throughout the centuries, the information got downgraded and the technology wasn't being used properly. And they're like, I think this is how we used to do it. And then I was like, no, nah, that's not how you used to do it. You're doing it wrong. And I think that's what part of the problem was right there. For the yeah. Archons, what is that? In case someone's thinking, what does that mean? Archons are more like a system and an inorganic AI kind of being. And what we're seeing now, and I'm still kind of putting the, those puzzle pieces together, but what I'm seeing now is that the archons are parasites, right? I, everything's about parasites. So the elite are parasites. I believe that uh, CV is a parasite. Um, we know that things like Ivor are working to reverse that yeah. and, and people are, that are getting sick. So yeah, what I'm seeing now is that everything is related to parasites. And that's also what the dark entities are, the archons are, they're parasites. These things need to feed from humanity because they cannot generate light on their own. They're so cut off and, and the archons are not even organic to earth. So when we talk about archons, when we talk, talk about parasites in general, so, you know, like the physical parasites that can live inside of us, you know, those things are not, they do not fit in the natural cycle of life on earth. Again, they're a negative alien introduction into our life here. And for the reason of, you know, siphoning our energy, making us sick. The most recent information I came across on the Archons spoke about them coming through the, there used to be a dark portal in the sun. And every year on the solstice, these Archons would come through that portal to kind of replenish their life here on earth because these parasites only last for like three or four years at a time and they need to keep introducing them onto earth in order to keep us sick. So, but what happened was the, the sun, that portal was closed within the sun and it was uh, replaced with creator energy. So now the sun is completely organic and they cannot come through there anymore. So now what's happening with the sh because the, the humans in control here need to keep that going, right? They need, they need the parasites. So they're developing their own system, archonic system of introducing these into humans. I don't know if you've seen that photo from Dr. Carrie Madey, who has looked at the vials under a microscope. Have you seen that photo? Yeah, yeah there's two conversations that uh, people were talking about it online and, and so on. And it kind of looks like the thing from Stranger Things or that movie, The Mist. Mm -hmm. You ever watched, I think it was called The Mist by Stephen King. So if you, if you ever watch those two movies and you watch this photo of it, you're kind of like, hmm, I see some similarities between the two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that thing is an arch archonic parasite. And we know that other parasites have been found in the vials too, not just that one, but others. So it seems like an invasion of parasites, you know, and that's how they're keeping humanity sick. And what I'm realizing is that the majority of our chronic illnesses here are are caused by parasites so yeah 
We're seeing it a lot more too in our sessions, like our uh, remote spirit release sessions, especially with the shot clearings that we do for people and seeing a lot of interdimensional parasites inside, outside, like invading the space apart from the artificial intelligence, nanobots. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff that we're seeing in there, etherically. Hmm. The plot thickens. <laughs> so you, if you figure it out, you the plot thickens some more. So I know with uh, me and Sarah, we talked about this once before, and it's even in Dolores Cannon's books. But do you think? I know they call it the fear virus. You know, from that was landed, that was on the meteorite. Do you think that's connected to this as well? I like, think that's like yeah. it was just an easy way to call it like bottom line the easy way to call it is a fear virus kind of exactly thing. exactly yeah. yeah that's exactly what it is see yeah. look people connecting the dots it's yeah. all yeah. it's yeah they're like mind viruses I don't know if you guys have ever seen videos of what the what parasites can actually do but there are some floating around of like say uh, uh parasites that are inside of crickets or um, even a praying mantis, things like that. And they literally take over the mind <clears throat> of whatever it is that they're infecting, humans too. And I'll tell you my story about that. So for say for a cricket or any kind of animal that it, it is infecting, it will take over the mind and behavior of that animal and force it something like a cricket that doesn't know how to swim to go in to water so that it can come out. So when that cricket goes into the water, it comes out in order to procreate. Mm -hmm. So it completely takes over the mind of whatever it is that, that is being infected with it. So it's a mind virus, really mind it's virus. Very interesting. I think one of the animal channels, Animal Planet, but there was a spider. So it was like this fungus or parasite that took over a spider and it uses its body to move. Mm -hmm. It doesn't move like a regular spider, but it's like it's like kicking one of its legs. And it, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, you could tell it has fungus on it or, or something all over it. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Yeah. So, so excuse me for one second my dog's barking I'll be okay right. how are you coming along karen i'm great uh tina's usually the one who who gets all that intel and information and i'm the one who goes in and can confirm it on the etheric realm so <laughs> yeah we've seen some stuff like just confirming everything that she's been seeing at least you know tying in and bridging the science with our actual practice so it's actually quite nice to well nice it's good to put the puzzle together, at least in, in getting an understanding of this anti-life stuff, because we're seeing it everywhere, how everybody is completely disconnected. So, yeah, it's it, like just seeing the whole divide and what's been happening with this whole vibe, even within the community, too. You can see the divide happening everywhere. We're all splitting off in different directions. And I feel like we do start off in, you know, um, you know, always starts off in a good place, but then eventually everything just divides. Do you think that happens to be one of their strategies to divide? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, we always hear a divide and conquer, right? And it's absolutely true. And it's happening within our own community, within the community's community. Like everything is splitting and splitting and splitting. So, I mean, I, I think like even within the spiritual community, we've been able to see that, you know, we all started off with a good message. I think that whole awakening process is really just for us to get that spark of hope again in humanity and in life. At least it did for me. And then after that, you have to go through your dark night of the soul in order to purge out the dark anti-life stuff that we've accumulated in order to make more space for the light. No, so instead of spiritually bypassing it all, then like what we've been seeing, waiting for the aliens to come get us to bring us to New Earth, we're completely disregarding our human experience to be here we're here to be human so if you can't master being a human then it takes away the whole spiritual journey perfect well said well said yeah sometimes i have to go to the grocery store get get a taste of reality when i'm at the grocery store i'm like oh it's not that we bad. all do <laughs> <laughs> i look like they're doing fine and then you, you watch certain individuals like you hear 
man, someone was complaining and screaming about something. You're like, oh, yeah, maybe that one's, uh, you know, got a taste of something else in their life, you know, yeah. and hollering, and screaming on the phone about something. I said, yeah, I'm going to the next stop. Everything's good, Tina? Yeah, sorry about that. So it's so speaking of mind viruses, this is very interesting. I'm <laughs> just thinking that. So Karen and I recently did a video about arconic parasites. And there was so much interference with that video as like we were trying, was trying to keep y'all from doing it. Yes. Including my dog. Every time we started talking about it, he would just start barking and he doesn't do that. That's not normal. And so that's what he was doing again. <laughs> mm. And I'm like, that must be Coco's mind parasite. But you know, here's the other thing about these things is they can travel through frequencies. So <laughs> it's also an energetic thing too. Yes. As well. It's not just a physical thing. It's energetic as well, or metaphysical. I mean, I have an, a long, really complicated story about parasites, but basically, yes, they can travel through frequencies and make you or your pets sick. And you might not have any idea why you're sick. Mm -hmm. You know, this happened to me in the summer with my dog. And I asked Karen to scan him. She picked up on interdimensional parasites. And I was like, okay, we cleared them. He, he seemed okay, but then he got really sick again. And he ended up two days after that, like throwing up actual worms. Oh, wow. And I took the worms to the vet, the emergency vet, and she said, I've never seen worms like this before. Really? Man, I should have had that documented. <laughs> yeah. That would have been interesting. Wow. Well, if you have a pet and you want to have a session with Tina and Karen. <laughs> yeah, we do pets. We wonder. love pet sessions. Yeah. <laughs> to add to the list of things to check out on wow which leads me to my next question so i'm assuming y'all you know, helped out certain clients in these situations as well and if someone's like interested in the process if you can just tell them what is the process that y'all go through is I'm, besides the hypnosis and all that but what else do y'all go through Remote spirit release. Mm -hmm. So in, in a remote spirit release session, we connect to you remotely. We're also offering those sessions live now. So say like you were having a session right now with us, we would meet you live on Zoom. And we have a full protocol that we go through to check for and clear things. Okay. So dark force entities, uh, we check your grounding, your inner and outer etheric fields. We clear and realign, optimize your chakras. We check for portals, earthbound souls, interdimensional parasites, cords. dissociated subpersonalities, cords, contracts, like a lot of things. <laughs> so we've had a lot of success with those sessions because the thing is, if you have attachments, it's really difficult to move forward in your healing. And the reason why I know that is because it happened to me. You know, I was sick with chronic illness for a really long time. And I was only getting so far in my healing. And I, every time I would like raise my vibration and start to feel good, I felt like something was pulling me back. And at the time, I started to question, like, could this be an entity attachment? But the spiritual community had told me that I believe what, I create what I believe in. So I certainly didn't want to be creating dark force entities, right? But that's a misconception and it's not true because the thing is, yes, we do create our own realities, but we also live within a collective reality that's always being created by the, un the collective unconscious. Mm. Right. If they see an opportunity, they're going to take it and you just might play it off like, well, I'm okay. You know, yeah. right, right. Gotcha. But most people do have some form of attachments and, you know, so my journey has been long with this kind of thing, like entity awareness, and then getting into actually clearing them. And 
we've see, we see the results. So the actual form, the RSR that we do was developed by a doctor from Britain named Dr. Terence Palmer. And he, he was a, a hypnotherapist, psychologist, and he noticed that, you know, his mental illness patients would get to a certain point and then not be able to progress at all, no matter what he did. Mm. Okay. So he started finding that they actually had entity attachments and he would treat them using hypnosis and releasing these entities, which can be a very long process. So then he developed a different way to do it, which was as say, like I would be the facilitator, Karen is a medium, so she can go in and view your energy field remotely. You don't even know it, it's be, need to know it's being done because we work on your energy body from anywhere in the world. Wow. So he developed this protocol. We've added to it and expanded upon it since being certified and going through that learning process. And we've had amazing results with it. Like, for example, we just had a six-year-old little boy who was born with gastroschisis, low platelet count, uh, count and um, an enlarged spleen. And... Mm -hmm we got a, a message today that this was the best nutritional um, evaluation he's ever had. His platelets are up to normal and his spleen has shrunk by 0.5 centimeters. Wow. That's awesome. Now I know Sarah, you mentioned Sarah's friend that did the book Sullivan. Yeah. And it was weird, not weird, but it was interesting how when she went to the doctor, and they said her tumor was reduced and the tumor was pretty much gone. And the doctor just like, she was telling them what she wind up doing the steps. And they said, Oh, okay. You know, they played it off. They didn't want to hear it. And so I asked her in the interview, I asked, her, I was like, so what did they think? They're like, Oh, the, the medicine finally worked. And she was taking it for like months, almost a year. And he said, oh, the medicine must have kicked in. It must have started working for her. Yeah. Well, speaking of the medical community, so <clears throat> Dr. Palmer, like his whole goal with this was to introduce it to the medical community to say, hey, here's an alternative treatment that you can use to treat mental illness, you know, because a lot of mental illness is, is if not caused by, exacerbated by entities. And, you know, he's tried and tried and tried. He does scientific research. He's compiled all of these case studies and he's just completely blocked out by the medical community. 100%. Shut the door on him. Wow. Well, hopefully some light will be brought on to that. You mentioned the SSP, the secret space program. Do they play any kind of role in all this that's going on? Or was there any information about that? Um, we're still kind of like gathering, but we are attracting a lot more people that are part of that secret space program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In, you mean in what's happening right now? Yeah, you mentioned the SSP. I was just wondering what, what information came across because coincidental, next week I have a video collaboration with Journey to Truth and they have in the SSP conference. So I thought that was interesting how you brought it up. Well, I'll tell you, we just had a recent case of a, a six-year-old little girl who was experiencing extreme night terrors every night waking up screaming. Anger, since she was a, just a baby, her mother noticed that she was just inconsolable and she could see the anger in her eyes. And she also started to develop this bad smell about her that a six-year-old little girl should not uh, have, I I heard right? About this, yeah. Yeah, I talked about it in one of our videos. Mm -hmm. And she came to us asking for a surrogate session for help for her little girl. And I said to her, listen, she has the hallmark signs of entity attachment. I think we should do an RSR first and clear her and then see how it goes from there. So we did that. We did the RSR, we cleared her, but during the RSR, we saw that she was being abducted. Yeah. 
by humans and or aliens? By aliens, but I, there were also humans involved. And it had something to do with her DNA and her, she has dragon DNA. Now, who doesn't want that? I mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so when we do an RSR, we don't really dig deep into those kinds of things. We dig deeper in the, you know, the quantum healing session. So when we did her quantum healing session, we saw that they were abducting her physically and etherically, you know, so they would take her consciousness at times when they weren't taking her physically, like actually abducting her from her room, they were taking her consciousness and experimenting on that. And inside the ship, they were um, playing around a lot with uh, aging technology. So age regression and aging. So when we landed in that scene, she was six years old, right, Car? Yeah. And they had aged her to 12. 12. Wow. And when we asked her, well, Karen was a surrogate, so she was experiencing this as if she were this little girl. And when we asked her, um, like, are there other children there? And she said, Yes, but I don't always recognize them because I could see them as a 12 year old and then come back and they're a baby because they're always playing around with their ages for these experiments. So then that takes a toll on their body, on their mind, body, spirit complex. Right. You know, so um, yeah. And the crazy thing about this is. Not only, so when we did her session, we saw that there were two other children that wanted the, to break their contracts and free themselves from these experiments. And it did feel very connected to some shadowy governmental programs. So these two other children wanted to break their contracts as well. So we ordered them to cease and desist with their experimentation. We retrieved all the data that they had on them restore them to their original organic blueprints and remove any technology that they had placed in their bodies. And the craziest thing was that just a week later, we had a session for a 21 year old um, who, had, who we had been working with previously and knew, and he was one of the children on the ship oh. with the six year old. Small yeah. world. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah and not only that but he was having similar symptoms that she was having so night terrors but his were more advanced because he was older and hadn't had any help all of this time so his symptoms were more advanced to the point where he was experiencing hallucinations and being tortured by them and you know all of these different kinds of really awful things but he has ac actually also gotten better so they're both improving since those sessions, which is the most important thing. That's the reason why we do the work we do, right? Mm -hmm. For the healing part of it. I mean, the, the little girl is almost experiencing a normal, healthy life now and not has not had any night terror since that session. And the 21-year-old, wow, yeah, it's amazing. And the 21-year-old is starting to slowly improve. He's going to need more work, but he's slowly improving. But the craziest part is we had a third client show up who was the other child on that ship. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. about this? Did they know that each one of y'all are talking to each one? Like they all, like they all came together? No. Oh. The little girls in New Zealand, the, um, the, the 21 year olds in Britain, and the last guy is in America. Wow. So I guess on a etheric realm or metaphysical realm, you're like, hey, you need to go see these people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need some sessions, people. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. 
Interesting. That is very, very interesting. Was there anything else that went along with that or that was pretty much it? That was pretty much it, but we, it really showed us what early intervention can do, you know, like in intervening in something like that for a child compared to experiencing that for a long period of time, it can really mess up someone's life. You know, um, so it was like seeing the contrast between intervention for the six year old, the 21 year old and a 50 some year old. So it was like those three and the experiences that they've had throughout their life. So finding out that, I mean, the um, the 50 year old male that we worked with, he had had he had always suspected that there was some kind of weird abduction stuff going on. And that was just really validating for him. Um, and, and, you know, it can cause a lot of trauma. So there's a lot of healing right. that Absolutely. needs to be done there. A lot yeah. of time too for that healing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, let's change gears a little bit, lighten up the mood and go on the positive <laughs> side of things. So the new earth, if you can Tell us what information you've gotten from your sessions that deal with the new earth. Like, what is the best way you could explain it? I don't, know if, I don't know if this is going to switch gears. Um, <laughs> well, I'm all ears. <laughs> what can we say about the new earth? I do feel, though, because so much misinformation there's a lot of things where we're being distracted from our own personal healing like i was saying earlier the only way to master or be as spiritual as you can is if you were to master the human within so that meaning you're gonna have to go deep in the dark shadows within yourself in order to change anything so when we talk about new earth it's like from what we've heard in the community it's something that is not here, technically. You know, we do live in this odd place, right? <laughs> and so it's like an expectation that we are going to get picked up by aliens and going somewhere else physically. You know how we say, like, we'll create heaven on earth? That's literally what it is. We have to create the near earth within ourselves. That's all it is. So you Because how are we yeah. going... Yeah, how are we going to ascend if we are all, if we're just packing on the light on top of the density? You can't go anywhere if you're not unpacking all your baggage. So, and again, like I keep thinking about the distractions of how or the things that are coming about in the community. Like, does it sound realistic to you if a UFO is going to come and pick you up? I would be scared shitless if there was an alien <laughs> that showed up at my door and said all right karen let's go you know we're going to the new earth i'd be like f no and i'm gonna shut that door like there's no way all right you, you're gonna ask for a manager you're gonna say can i speak to a man right <laughs> yeah, yeah no i am the manager at that point I'd be like, no. no way no but it's like we have to think about what can we really see in this reality like ground it into our reality and see like is this true like nasara jasara med beds all the beautiful things that i do feel we can get there one day not in this lifetime sorry to break it to a lot of people but if imagine like all the people that have technically died of this fear virus you know, and finding out that there's med beds out there that could have saved their loved ones. Do you know what an uproar that would cause to people yeah, who have lost? Absolutely. And that's a great especially, point. yeah, and especially in a world where we live in such a lack state of being and you bringing in Nisara Jasara and you're giving that to people who don't even know how to deal with money, you know, living in a state of not, of abundance instead of lack. Everyone's in lack. So how are you going to bring these gifts i'm going to call them gifts because they are gifts right but we're not ready to receive those gifts if we can't even accept who we are healing ourselves getting rid of that lack stuff being able to know how powerful we are and not looking outside of ourselves to heal us we can heal ourselves we're a very powerful vessel we have the source god light within ourselves so that should be enough to know how powerful we are everybody's looking outside of themselves for information Everybody's coming in to the community and saying like, okay, great. You know, like, let's go and channel beings that we're not even checking 
if they're even genuine. We work, we live in this world where there is light and dark. So who's to say that a ninth dimensional Pleiadian is going to come in and tell you this is what's going to happen. And we're going to say like, okay, I'm going to listen to the ninth dimensional Pleiadian and not check how genuine it is. It could be an entity. And this is what we've seen in our work. So many people going almost in a state of psychosis because of their channeling, because of what they're connecting to. And they don't even realize that they are getting a complete takeover, giving them up themselves channeling that energy coming inside of their own bodies, changing their DNA. And it's like, we have to deal. It's really difficult for us, especially because we're educated in remote spirit release, seeing and understanding, like literally being students of the dark and watching the community. Like, oh God, it just really <laughs> irritates us because it's like, if only we were able to incorporate the darkness, then it would be so much easier. Then your new earth would be right here. We wouldn't have to go anywhere if we are happy inside, if we are whole inside, if we can recognize the God within instead of looking for the God outside <laughs> that is not separate from you. So it, it is about anti-life, life, anti-life, anti -life, making a choice lightness and dark it is loving both parts of the duality within and being able to heal it and also to integrate yourself so new earth it's all here i've created my own new earth tina's created her own new earth we are always learning we are never going to be completely healed it's lifetimes and as you see, the collective is nowhere close to being healed. So we are going to continue to be healing ourselves. There's always more stuff that we're sifting through. It's just that the cycles take a little longer. It's not so much where we're in a reactionary state. It's just more an observance, mm -hmm. understanding, and not accepting anything less than what we deserve now. Like breaking all of the old paradigms, all of the old conditioning, all of the old beliefs, and literally just being and that's what we hope people can do. <laughs> that's what we want people to get to. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, you, you mentioned alienship and the med bed. So I have a couple of theories, a couple of thoughts. So for the alienship thing, this was kind of like my thought. When I first heard about it, I can kind of see, I was thinking things as a bigger picture as a whole, as mankind getting to the next level. So like, let's say, we hit rock bottom and these ships did come down to assist us. If we were to ever look back, we'll probably be like a little upset, like, man, we could have did that ourselves. Like we, sh we should have, you know, if, if you think of it as a game or a video game at, of life, like, man, I, I was so close, you know, some systems have to go down to get to the next level. And for them to interfere with our progress, we'll always look back and say, why did you interfere? We could have did it on our own. What would have happened if you didn't interfere? So yeah, I have that kind of theory. And for the med beds, me and Tracy talked about this. And, I, you know, it's kind of like there's so much technology that deals with these med beds. And that if they were all, all out in the public, they just like in Atlant Atlantis times, you can use that technology and reverse engineer it and use it for bad. So right. that was hold on to, in a, so we don't do anything crazy with them. And it were kind of like, well, we should wait to y'all get to the next step, the next level when y'all calm down and like, it's not so chaotic. And once when y'all hit a higher level of consciousness, then it'd be like, okay, here's the med beds for y'all because right. you can do dangerous stuff with them because of the technology inside of them. And I thought that was pretty interesting. But here's the thing, too. We are the med beds. We are the technology. And that's in episode we, four. <laughs> we have untapped potential within us. You guys, I, like I have full body chills right now because you don't even realize the potential of the human. We have it all within us. If I can heal myself from 18 years of chronic illness and pain, Anyone can, but you have to believe it. You yeah, have to believe that you can heal from it. 
Otherwise, it's a waste. But the thing like Karen was alluding to, people don't want to do the work. They just want to get in a med bed or, you know, have someone show up on the doorstep with a bunch of gold and some cash and be like, you know, it's all here. You're like, like a leprechaun. Again, yeah. Like, hey. again, it's this, it's this. It's a pro it's the bypassing savior, it's the savior programming that has gripped humanity and is still gripping humanity even within the spiritual community and especially within the spiritual community yeah. with all of these hopes and dreams for you know being saved by the aliens or the next president or the white hats or this or that or whatever. We are the saviors. Right. We are the only ones that can save ourselves. You cannot help another person that does not want your help. You can only help yourself and save yourself. And when all of us begin to realize that and do that, we have to actually follow through and do the work. There's no stopping us. Right. Like We're just limitless. We, we're the only ones who place these limits on ourselves. So, yes. and, you know, also about the new earth, what I wanted to add in February of 2020, I had uh, my own se a BQH session for myself. And Dolores Cannon came through in that session. Uh-oh, Dolores comes in again. <laughs> she said, and this was before like we really knew anything about what was happening. Like we knew there was a virus, but I would like I wasn't afraid of it or like there wasn't all the hype yet. It was February of 2020. And she said. And I was just really relaying what she was saying to me, not fully understanding it at the time, but she was saying, there will be more chaos. And basically her message was, stay in the heart, stay centered, creation, so creation of the new earth, creation itself is born out of destruction because you cannot build anything new on top of the old, it has to fall apart. And she said, this is a period of transition. Mm. But we still have a choice as a collective, whether we want to take the path up to the organic ascension path, or if we're gonna turn down that dark slope. There's nothing written in stone from here. Like there's no, choosing a timeline like it's there's no, nothing written in stone the only thing you can choose is for your own self and your own life and what you're going to do with it we have no control over the rest of the collective we only have control over ourselves so perfect hence the reason for this video series because it sounds like there's a battle between the two you know the bad trying to make the collective go downwards Whereas the good is in a battle to make the collective go upwards. Yeah. Very nice. Very uh, nice. Trust, yeah. And trusting a plan. The trusting the plan really is about ourselves, like trusting ourselves. There is no plan. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. And uh, you man, know they go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say something about Dolores Cannon. It was on the tip of my tongue. But for the black goo, do we just, since it's here, do we just kind of deal with it, the alien black goo, or do we have to do something with it, like get rid of it? You mean within ourselves or? Everything, the, the planet, the metaphysical realm, or we just kind of like deal with it and see what happens? Well, we are dealing with it right now, but on a metaphysical realm, like I said, you can do that meditation to integrate it within yourself, you know? So again, going back to source, asking to be shown the point of conception and the introduction of that anti-life particle and then integrating it into your being. So everyone can do that. And Coco's mind virus is acting up again. <laughs> I think she, I think she agrees. <laughs> She's like, yes. <laughs> Yes, do it. <laughs> Still trying to remember that thought about Dolores Cannon. I was going to add to it. I know she used to always, you know, look within, stand within your light kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Karen, did you have anything about the wave of light by any chance when in earlier sessions? You don't hear it too often now, but earlier you used to hear something called the wave of light. Has anything come across on your side? 
wave of light. Uh, is there any more to that context? Just so that I can sift through my information, my database. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I took it as like the wave of light was if things got too bad and we fell too far, source would send oh. a wave of light to just say, here's an energetic type of push kind of thing, like a reset. I personally, because from what we've learned in our practice of understanding the inversion, the inverted matrix, there really isn't very much that we can trust apart from our own guidance system inside. It always comes back to us. So I don't want to be discouraging in that sense, because a lot of people, again, we're trying to get people out of the lazy town and becoming a little more self-sufficient and taking responsibility for themselves and their own traumas and all of the stuff, all the hard work. Um, because the only way that we're ever going to get out of it, I think it's all about us, nothing outside of us. And I mean, if God's going to send anything, we're it. We are, God is within us. So it's a choice, a matter of choice. And, you know, we hear about our free will, but because of the inverted matrix, there's so many infringements from these dark force entities, for example, that are manipulating us to act in certain ways, triggering us so that it brings up a lot of our traumas and we react out of our, you know, out of that trauma. So, I mean, to say that we have free will on an organic sense from what we've gathered, no, there is no free will until you are able to clear yourself, until you understand the darkness, until you can remain sovereign on your own without anything outside of you to assist you. You have to be stable and solid in yourself. So, I think we are the light that you're talking about. As far as I'm concerned, I am so skeptical from the practice that we've seen about the archangels, about all the good beings. I'm pretty sure they do exist, but they seem to be very far at this time that we are being called to only rely on our own source light inside. Okay. Maybe God is saying, hey, guys, I need to roll up the sleeves, get the work. Yeah, yeah. I think they're yeah. forcing us to get to work. Because we've become so reliant or um, dependent on sources outside of us to do it for us, that it's really like, no, in our, like, since we've been working it all, every lesson that we've ever had between Tina and I, it was always like, it always comes back to us. We cannot rely on anything else but ourselves. Perfect. But I, what I would like to add to that, too, is what I've seen in like my own sessions and others that have come to us is that it's not one single wave of light, not one single flash of light, yes, but it's mm -hmm. a series of light that's constantly streaming into the planet even right now. And what that light is helping to do is to, um, you know, come kind of picking up the rug and exposing mm -hmm. what's, underneath of that and that's why we're seeing all of this darkness not because it's it just came out of nowhere because it's always been there it's just that the light is shining on it now so that we can see it and not just the darkness outside of us but the darkness within as well mm. so you know a lot of the ascension right. symptoms people talk about are these waves of light coming in and helping the body to purge these densities because that's, that's what it is. It's just like all the suppressed emotion, all the suppressed pain, all the suppressed trauma and things that with stories, things that with paradigms, beliefs, conditioning, all of it, you know, it's, it's, it's all being revealed. It's like, yeah, it is like a revelation. Yeah. I find the recovery is a lot easier. Like even, you know, how we used to see memes all the time about that. It's uh, retrograde or mercury re retrograde, but I don't feel it anymore because of how much work we've done on ourselves that it's a lot easier i find the transition or the the purging is less a lot less so if people are still being affected by it it's just mirroring what you need to look inside of yourself that's all right and okay. you know this is really the first time ever for humanity that 
we don't have to die in order to come back and ascend in consciousness. That we actually get to do this within a physical form. This uh-huh. is the first first time ever that we're doing this and watching and experiencing and feeling the the shifts within our own energetic system. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty exciting when you think about it. I do say have to say it is pretty interesting and exciting times indeed. At least I say that. <laughs> Other people <laughs> might say otherwise, but to see these type of changes, it, it is pretty interesting to see how all this is going to play out. You know, yeah. Like Dolores said, it's like a movie. Yeah, it is. It literally it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. So, yeah. Karen, you mentioned to clear stuff out of yourself. If someone's watching this video, what is what are some of those tips and advice that you would give individuals to help out with this journey, to help out with this plan? And you mentioned to clear yourself. How would someone clear yourself? Clearing themselves can mean a number of things. So, I mean, like, we all have mediumistic um, capabilities. Everybody's a medium. It's just a matter of how in tune you are within yourself. Um, So, I mean, like clearing things out. I, for me, because Tina and I are twin flames. So we are able to look at each other as that mirror effect. She showed me all of my darkness, even the good too. But I mean, I, yeah, she showed it to me. And so like we, I took that to my advantage, knowing very well that I could have ran. I knew that she loved me. So it was enough for me to be like, okay, I don't love myself that much yet, but I know she does that if she can see all of my shadows and still like me, that's a great sign. So I use that, like I said, the reflection of myself, the darkness. Um, We can use that for anybody. Everybody is a mirror to us. Everybody is showing ourselves. (laughs) So you either can take advantage of being triggered and feeling the feels like where it gets really uncomfortable and not blaming it, but looking inside. That is a great tool but one that a lot of people cannot stand because it's it's painful to see yourself like no one wants to see the ugly parts no one wants to see or re-feel because again a lot of us are very sensitive highly sensitive people very empathic and so to avoid feeling it we just kind of stuff it down or like okay well I don't want to deal with this right now we go on to the next distraction so I don't know. For me, I went all in. I would just be like coming like, okay, show me more. Show me more. I want to see more because I'm tired of suffering. You have to come to a place where you're so sick and tired of suffering that you want to do something about it. And you know that nothing outside of you can do it. You have to be the one to heal. So when I say clear yourself, use other people experiences as your guide to show yourself, reveal what's inside of there that needs to be healed. That's very like basic. It's hardcore if you really like the way that I did it, but it's just um, being able to be self-aware. That's all that it's the requirement, being self-aware, accepting it, loving yourself for whatever it is, having a lot of compassion for your journey, forgiving at every turn, it's everything. It's Mm -hmm. all the things that we are not taught traditionally, but to go in and see that these tools are actually for the benefit of our growth and evolution. Right. So an example would be like, let's say you was extremely upset about something. It's, it's you figuring out what makes you so upset about something. And then also thinking about it at a deeper level, just not like what you assume, but also what's on the back end of it, of what's making you so upset about a certain thing. Yeah, it usually trails back to a core wound from childhood. You know, my core wounds are are like abandonment. You know, that's a really big one for me. So a lot of my triggers stem from that. My codependent nature stems from that. Like it's, these are things that I had to ask within myself. Like, what is it that is stopping me from, or what is making me suffer all the time? and to look at that and where it comes from. So it's understanding, it's like really a deep introspection, but consciously and and applying all the theory that you can to your life and healing yourself from that. 
Mm, very interesting. Pretty cool. Tina, you had anything you wanted to add to that? <laughs> no, I mean, Karen said it all Perfect. really, really well. Yeah. I think clearing too is, you know, all of the, of course, the, the inner work and then adding to that, just clearing also any attachments and negative energies that have accumulated over time. You know, a lot of us as sensitives and empaths and stuff, we will take on the energies of other people. And those energies, you know, energy never dies, right? So if we're taking on stuff for everybody all the time and kind of allowing them to dump on us, right? I'm sure a lot of your listeners are the person that everybody dumps on that just like, you know, <laughs> comes to because they're, they feel like they're being understood and listened to and loved in the, in the way that they are. But then they're taking on all of that stuff too, not even realizing it energetically. Like and a person stuff, to cry on, like a shoulder to cry on. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And those energies can stay in your field and you accumulate over time. So if you think of, you know, your energetic field surrounding you, um, like your outer etheric field, your aura, the layers of your aura, um, those energies that people come to you and kind of dump there will build up over time. And that can also affect your mood, you know, just the feeling of being really heavy at times or feeling held back or like you can't move or, you know, just shifting back and forth a lot and feeling weighed down is, is what we hear a lot. People feeling just weighed down by the world. So yeah, really coming into your your power and recognizing the power of the source light within you that you are God incarnated <laughs> like you are God you have all the same powers that God has inside of your physical vessel yeah. and it's just about tapping into that and beginning to use that to your advantage well said I know for me when I was told in person over the phone and in one of the the books as well uh, that I was reading because like it says like you are God you know you want to know who God is I am you and I am you and I am you know yourself and vice versa so I'm like well, wait a minute what you mean I am God you know in my mind I, I was thinking like no we're separate you know uh we're separate beings not connected but learning this information is it, it kind of makes sense it's like for you to have consciousness and for you to exist, you would have to be part of source or God. And if you weren't connected, then you wouldn't be here today. So if you weren't a part of it, and I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Take it. laughs> yeah. Because, you know, God or source, whatever you want to call it, wants to experience it itself in infinite ways. And so, God was like, you know, I love you so much that I want to experience life through your eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's what has, um, you know, when I had that realization, that was really huge for me. And that really gave me the power to be like, I can really do anything. I can heal myself. I can get through this. I don't need to suffer anymore. I am powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what humanity is, is missing right now is that feeling powerful because you know religion has done some damage to humanity and what our guides have showed us our guides are jesus and mary magdalene and what they have showed us um we did a, a tandem session together once and i experienced the as life as mary magdalene experiencing the death of jesus on the cross and the pain and suffering that I felt was, I don't even have words for it. It was immeasurable, but I wasn't just feeling her pain. I was feeling, what they explained was I was feeling the pain that that story has caused within the collective consciousness over time. All of the wars that have been fought, all of the, dastardly deeds that have been done, all of the guilt, all of the shame, all of the everything that these beliefs have caused in the consciousness of humanity over time. I think and I'm so, picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> yeah. And so 
when I asked, you know, why did you show us this? Why did we see this? What they showed me was that that pain, those programs of martyrdom and the victim and victimizer and the savior program and all of the pain that th that one single story has caused for humanity is beginning to be transmuted now mm. at the beginning stages can't hear me no no i'm listening oh <laughs> yeah. yeah it's beginning to be transmuted now and so they told me that that story was not true, mm -hmm. that Jesus did not die on the cross or suffer, that he actually ascended into heaven. And they showed me, they showed me, like, again, I was Mary kind of watching it. And they showed him like sitting like in a lotus position and you know, this, this white light came down upon him and he looked very peaceful. He was, he looked like he was in his like forties maybe. And this peace came over him and his body started to vibrate and also become more translucent. And then he just began to rise through this column of light up into the heavens and was greeted by angels. And when I asked, because that kind of blew my mind, I was raised Catholic. So, you know, I was still kind of carrying all of those beliefs and things that we were taught. Like, what do you mean Jesus wasn't crucified? I've been living like this has been a lie all my life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that kind of reaction. Um, Did you read? Well, probably not, but hopefully not, because it would be interesting what information you do get. But did you ever read Dolores Cannon's books about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I'm yeah. interested in reading those books as well. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think it's interesting because there are many stories. So, all right, let me just finish this one and yeah, then I'll yeah. tell you what I think about that. So, absolutely. Um, so, basically, you know, we, I don't really know for sure, but I feel in my heart that that is true, that Jesus really didn't suffer and die for our sins. And we're not sinners and we don't need to be shameful and guilty and unworthy and all of the things that they teach us that we are, that humanity needs to now recover from those programs because none of it is real. And he actually said something to the effect of, this was the beginning of like the dark cabal infiltration. This story of Jesus's crucifixion was a huge part of their plan. Because what better way Video to control <laughs> humanity than to make them feel like worthless sinners and to right. give all their money to the, to the church to be saved? Yep. Like what better way, you know? So... 10% of, of your fortune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of a relief to hear that none of that was true, but it's also like, so we're all carrying around this pain and the shame and this guilt for no reason, <laughs> you know, for no reason. And, you know, it, the thing is like, even if those stories were true, Jesus has always said to us, like, I didn't come to save you from your sins. You're not sinners. I came to show you another way to bring in this Christ stream of energy to set the stage for where you are now, where you can take the reins and carry it through. Because mm -hmm. as a, as humanity, we have the capability of doing that and, and going up that ascension slope and not down into a descension. So. Yeah. Perfect. I always wanted to have this conversation. So I'm going to bypass all my questions and, and <laughs> focus on this one because I, th I think you, I think it's on to something because I remember, I don't know where I got this information from, but it was kind of like, I don't know if it was from one of the sessions or not, but it was kind of like, you know, you, you always see Jesus on the cross and it's like, 
you know, if you praise in Jesus and you love Jesus, why do you have him on the cross? And why are you always representing him on the cross in pain and, and so on? Why aren't you having him where he's doing a healing or he's praying or, or he's showing love and compassion? Why you have it with the cross? So that was one thing. And then another one was... Um, uh, Dolores even mentioned is that he didn't die for our sins. He died for what he was teaching and what he believed yeah. in. Okay. So, because it, it, just like how you were saying, like, like right off the bat, oh, he died for your sins. But right now you just said that he died for my sins. I'm like, oh, so I'm a sinner, you know, so right. I, have, I have all these sins, you know, so. Yeah. Even when, when you're born, you're born a sinner as a fresh, new, little baby. You're born a sinner. And they say, they tell, you know, Catholics that if that baby is not baptized, that it will go to hell. Right. Like, what better way to control people, you know? Yeah. And so I did a little bit of digging after that information came through. And I found that there is actual no historical record of the crucifixion, not even in the Bible. Mm. And, and the, the Muslims, um, they recognize Jesus as the Messiah, but they also don't believe in his crucifixion. Really? That's interesting. Comment below. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it just a little tidbit of information. And it was kind of like with systems, we had this conversation once before with, with other people, practitioners and so on. It was kind of like what system needs to fall first. And, you know, it was the political system that we have that is constraining the people was the first system. And then um, the other system was the medical system that we have in place. It, but the hardest, and it makes sense, but the, one of the hardest systems to get over and to fall down would be the religion system because mm -hmm. of how deep rooted it is. And just, I mean, if you think about it, the King James version, what they took out and what they put back in, and a lot of it deals with control, you know, just like mm -hmm. how you said, if you don't do this, you cause and sin. If you don't do that, you're doing this. And if you, and if you look at religion in ancient times, like, the times of Zeus and other gods. It was kind of like, what could you do to get these people into your temple? You, what tricks you can play, making thunder, making Zeus cry. And, you know, the gods are upset. You need to donate money. So a lot of control dealing with that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and what Jesus said too is, you know, to, there's so many, there's a lot of truth in the Bible, but that truth has been manipulated. And when you mix truth with lies, it pretty much just, you know, the whole thing's worthless. And what he explained was that to sin, like the actual word to sin, means to make a mistake. And when you make a mistake, that doesn't make you, you know, guilty or shameful or unworthy of God's love. God loves you no matter what, with all of your flaws, your imperfections, like whatever you feel are the ugliest parts of yourself, God loves you anyway, you know, and, and where we need to begin healing is we need to begin to love ourselves and all of the parts of ourselves that we feel are unworthy and ugly, you know, the parts of ourselves that we don't want to look at or that we cast aside. And that's, that's a, a form of self betrayal. When we're not fully accepting of ourselves, we're betraying ourselves, we're not honoring ourselves. And, and when we're not honoring ourselves, we're not honoring God. So we need to come back into loving and honoring ourselves. It's a whole program of uh, conditional love and gaslighting us and saying that it's unconditional interesting stuff in the previous videos i always ask this question but i'm going to skip it but it deals with the three days of darkness or 10 days of darkness have y'all seen anything on that one if not no big deal we'll go to the next one i feel that we are in it yeah some have said that <laughs> we're already in it yeah we're in it okay 
And with me living in New Orleans, I think I had my 10 days of darkness without electricity. So mm, I think man. I had my version of it. <laughs> so here's a the new question. A new question is, and someone brought this up. I even saw it as a comment on a YouTube video. But have you gotten any information where you could think of, you mentioned a cabal. So the cabal or the deep state or whoever, even powerful figures have any information ever came across where they are reincarnating into the same lives, into the same family? Or they're, once when that one soul is here, they experience that family group and then they move on to a, a, night, a different powerful type of family or a different type of family. But what are your thoughts on that one? You mean they're kind of just like playing um, musical chairs, <laughs> like, like soul wise? <laughs> <laughs> that or like, let's say, let's say you have a, a royalty, a royalty family, you know, when they have a child, that child happens to be their great, great grandpa in the same mm -hmm. royal family. Just when that great, great grandpa passed away, now he's coming back into the same family and you know it's keeping the cycle together yeah and reincarnating that's an interesting concept i i believe that most of the people in the deep state cabal royalty aren't human souls um so okay. it actually would make sense that what you're saying would make sense especially if they're not human souls gotcha i'll make it a lot easier for them to bend the rules and mm -hmm. keep reincarnating into the same family Right. How about DNA? Has you have anything about information about DNA came through it upgrading or anything about that? No, not much on DNA. I mean, from my understanding alone, that we are, you know, activating those etheric parts of our DNA, you know, mm -hmm. kind of moving from two strands up to 12 and even beyond. And gotcha. we absolutely have the capability of doing that. So, yeah. Perfect, perfect. And the last question, and you brought up Atlantis. Is there anything else you would like to share about Atlantis that you learned about? Well, I just feel like it's very parallel to what's happening now. And all the same players are here. And we're repeating this cycle. And us as light warriors, like we have the opportunity now, not just to sit back and allow this to happen again to where everything gets destroyed. It's time for us to stand up, to stand in our truth, to not allow this, you know, to keep going forward in a peaceful way, of course, um, but to stop complying. And because the more we comply, the more power we give to them. And I see this going in a really bad direction if more people don't start to stand up for themselves. My country is already really bad. I'm from Canada. So, I mean, like, it's, you can't go anywhere without a vaccine passport right now. Oh, wow. Like, so, you know, we are going there. Like, people are seeing it. We've predicted it. Like, we've done videos, like, at the beginning of the pandemic, already predicting everything that is happening at this now moment. So, I mean, the whole point is to disconnect, right? And uh, just a side note about um, the things that we've seen in our sessions is that people are jumping out of their bodies. Like we actually crossed someone over who ended up being someone's father who's alive. <laughs> so like, how's that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? Everyone is a running, like when you get, again, you are inserting or have the potential of inserting that anti-life particle inside, which is part of the disconnection from mm -hmm. your source self. And so in that case, you are unable to anchor yourself fully into your body. And therefore we are seeing people jumping out of the body and they're walking zombies, literally walking zombies that we see on like earthbound souls. Earthbounds are the ones that have died and have stayed on the earth plane who have not been able to cross over. So we've seen a lot of those, and but they're actually still alive their right. body alive. their bodies are alive and their soul is out wandering around in the street 
because it cannot anchor into the body because it is so damaged. It's so damaged from the genetic modification that it's unable to fully anchor in. And you hear about like, I've seen a few people write about like this massive walk out of souls, but they're not walking all the way over and their bodies aren't dying. Their bodies are staying alive and functioning on the program, the script that they're running on. Kind of like but, autopilot kind of? Yeah. Yeah, they become yeah. backdrops. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's interesting because not everyone is affected in the same way. So some people are a lot more affected than others. So we surmise that some of the sh may be um, placebo, like oh. either, pl either placebo or really stepped down and not as poisonous as some of them, because if they would have rolled them all out like that at the, at the beginning. Uh, yeah. Everybody would be yeah. talking about them. Mm -hmm. Right. So they kind of did it in smaller batches. And from what we've seen, so there's that aspect of it where there are probably different strengths of shots. And also the amount of source light somebody is holding, the, the, the strength of their connection, the strength of their connection to self and God also matters a lot to the symptoms they're experiencing and if they still have a divine spark or not. Do you have any information about shadow people? When you mentioned people passing over and everything, is, is that connected to, at all to sh people sh called shadow people? Shadow people, I believe, are earthbound souls that have deteriorated. So souls can sometimes leave the body, say they die, say someone dies and say it's someone that has done really dark things in their life, maybe mm -hmm. even practice black magic, things like that. Those souls will actually deteriorate. So you can, so, you know, when people say, well, my soul always stays whole and the same, that's not true. We can see the t deterioration of the soul depending on how you've lived life. So not even just this life, but all of your lives over time. Um, and if you've participated in a lot of dark kind of, say even like dark witchcraft and um, dark magic of any kind, that can lead to the deterioration of the soul. Mm -hmm. And they can actually show up earthbound or in the astral or in purgatory as like shadow like beings which we've been seeing a lot too we find that the that purgatory astral realm is really close now yes yeah we're getting yeah. a lot more readings with a lot of astral beings being here on the physical yeah which is part of us i feel like moving through that fourth dimensional space, we're beginning to see things physically that we really didn't see before, or even etherically that we really weren't seeing before. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. What about the Great Reset? You had anything on that? Well, I mean, you know, we all know it's a push by the dark ones. And I don't know, what else do you want to know about it? Well, the question will be like, is the Great Reset more for the new earth? Or is it more for the new world order? It's a distorted version of the newer. Gotcha. It's a distorted version. So it's like, we're going to give you everything you ever wanted, but we're going to take all your freedom away. Mm. So you'll have a home, you'll have plenty of money to buy food. You know, you won't have to worry about those things. There's a catch. So it, there's, a catch. <laughs> there's always a catch. And that catch is you have no freedom. And you'll love it. <laughs> that's what they tell you. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what they say. You, you will own nothing and uh, you'll be happy. Yep. Wow. See, like they're making those, those are suggestions, right? Like hypnotic suggestions. They're telling you what you're going to feel. You'll own nothing and you'll love it. They're, they're already placing that into the consciousness of humanity. So people will be more likely to accept it. Right. 
you own nothing, you'll be happy, but you also have to do everything we say. If not, you won't have anything. Right. right. And it goes with the VAC stuff. That's wow. exactly what they're telling the people. Mm, connecting the dots. Perfect. Well, do you happen to have any tips on how to raise your vibration to leave it on a positive note to lift everybody up? <laughs> do the hard work. I'm sorry that it's, I'm that's, sleeves. yeah, you got to roll up the sleeves and be brave and face yourself. You're the most beautiful being here, right? You're here as God. And if you want to look at yourself or you want to see God, see yourself. And so I feel that's everybody's so beautiful. It's just they they don't see it yet. We have like we're we're in a collective of people who have no self-worth, no self-love, don't know how to do that. So you can't start outside of yourself. You have to start within. So that would be my suggestion. We just don't know. Yeah. Because the more you purify your vessel, mind, body, and spirit, the more you purify. So the more you clear, like we were talking about earlier, the higher your vibration is going to raise. Because it's like, just like Dolores was saying, we can't build anything new on top of all the old stuff. We have to clear out the old stuff and make way for a higher vibration, right? So it's like clearing out the density from the body, all the suppressed emotions, the trauma, the things, the stories, the beliefs, the, the paradigms that you're holding, clearing those. And when you do that, you naturally raise in vibration, right? It's just a natural process for you when you purify yourself. Yes. Purifying yourself means, you know, you kind of have to look at those things and be like, do I want this or don't I want this? And how do I, if I don't want this, how do I heal this and let it go? For Tina and Karen, do y'all share a website together or do y'all have separate YouTube channels or do y'all combine everything? It's all combined. Oh, together. Yeah. Perfect. So if someone wanted to get in touch with you, uh, what is, what's the best way to get in touch with you? And what information would you like to provide? Well, our website is quantumhealingwithtina.com. We had started that before Karen was like really in, like she explained, like we just kind of were practicing that. So when you open the page, it'll say quantum healing with Tina and Karen. And the web, the, the YouTube, our YouTube is the same name. So quantum healing with Tina and Karen. Perfect. So you can re reach out to us through our website, check out our YouTube, and it's Tina with an E, so T E N A. Perfect. Quantum Healing with Tina and and Karen. And you can also find us on the Quantum Healers directory as well, quantumhealers.com. Okay. And I'll have links in the description as well for the website and her and their uh, YouTube channel. So you can easily click on it and have access to their information. And did y'all have fun tonight? I, I know at first y'all sounded like you were a little nervous, but did y'all have fun? <laughs> I oh, try no, to make I, it fun as possible. No, I really did have a lot of fun, actually. I feel this is like the most relaxed interview I've ever felt. So I appreciate that. Perfect. I thought yeah. a couple of my jokes were uh, break the ice and make y'all <laughs> a little bit. So if any interesting information ever comes through again, let me know. I have an open platform and we can do this again. And, you know, maybe you have a episode 10 since you already got five. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sounds okay. good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, unless there's something else you would like to add, we'll wrap it up and call it a night. No, I'm, we're good. Thank you so much for having us. I think we covered a lot tonight. Perfect. Yes, thank thank you. you very much. Pleasure thank to be you, here. Tina. Thank you, Karen. Make sure you go check out her their uh, YouTube channel. Give them a like. Subscribe to their channel. It's very interesting stuff. I, very fascinating. And I think you're doing great work. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a good night and take care. Bye. Bye.